Okay, guys. You might be seeing the slight green glow on my shirt. And that is for a very intensely intense reason. And uh, this is about to be a very controversial video. Just how I share. Because I did a thing. And uh, not everybody's going to enjoy this thing. But I did a thing. I switched distros yet again because, well, of course, I tried using Gentoo and uh, Gentoo was working, except uh, I was trying to get a couple of the LXDE or LXQT tools installed that I typically use on an almost daily basis, and they were constantly failing. So, as a result, I reached out to the Gen 2 IRC community to see if maybe they, they had a solution, and uh, they didn't. So, I go looking at the package maintainers for, like, these packages, and version 1.1 for LXQT isn't even in the repositories yet. So... It doesn't seem like it's being worked on, which is uh, one of the main reasons why I've quit Gen 2 before when I was using the Mate desktop because, well, Gen 2 n still is using 1.24 because nobody's updating one dot updating Gen 2 to 1.26. So I did a thing, and uh, I did probably what. A good majority of Linux users did, and I installed the latest version of Ubuntu, uh, Ubuntu 22.04, and uh, this is my native system, and uh, I've been playing around with it, and I've got some opinions to share with you guys. The biggest opinion that I have is that it's not a horrible distro. Like, uh, Ubuntu today is not that bad compared to Ubuntu be back when people generally liked it and, for the most part, supported it. But uh, I'm also using Ubuntu Mate and not Ubuntu proper. And honestly, I think that's going to be the way that I'm going to be using Ubuntu from now on, is I'm going to use the flavors. Because I did briefly attempt the Ubuntu proper, and while they've done a lot of cool things with GNOME, I just don't see myself using it on the daily basis. Because uh, everywhere I'm looking at it, it's just not, there's just, not quite my thing. So, uh, I installed the Mate Edition, and, uh, I'm actually quite enjoying the Mate desktop, but there's a lot of stuff on here that, uh, I'm having some problems with, you know? Uh, I'm tip- I'm actually typically a, uh, Pipewire user. Like, on all my other videos that you've seen me post, I've been using Pipewire for them. Because uh, Pipewire is giving me, gives me a lot, a lot of jack utilities that I can actually use uh, on my system to uh, route audio devices and such, which I I haven't gotten too big into for like the videos and stuff, but uh, I've been wanting to, and uh, I've been I attempted very briefly to get Pipewire up and working on uh, Ubuntu Mate. But for some reason, I can't get it to actually function properly. And I've been digging into it, and it just seems to be an issue with, like, the Ubuntu package itself that's in the LTS release. I think that they might have stabilized on a bad package. So, uh, I've been looking at the potential of the PPAs. And, well... Something about it just doesn't feel right, setting up the PPA. 
Because there is one available. But I just don't know how I feel about it when, you know, I can install Arch Linux and set up Pipewire to work exactly how I want, want it to. Or I can just install Fedora where it works out of the box like I want it to. So, I know on la on my last distro hacking stream, I said I was going to try to use it for 30 days. But I want to use uh, Pipewire because I, I like the tools that it gives me access to. And it's just not working here. I did attempt using uh, uh, other desktop environments because... Because I was thinking maybe it was uh, the Mate edition itself that was doing it. I have even went out and nuked for a minimal installation to uh, just an just an open box uh, installation. And uh, that's not wanting to work too well either. And as a result, that's kind of like paused me on uh, the window manager project. But that's going to that's not going to be like a weekly series. That's going to be a series that I put that I post videos into er every now and then because well I'll be honest with you window managers are going to be fun to play around with but I don't want to be playing around with them every single day you know <laughs> so I don't want to burn myself out on that series at all so uh, that series is I don't know if it's going to be weekly bi-weekly or what it's going to be but it's going to be a series that comes out every now and then in the meantime I'm going to be coming out with like these other these other videos where I just kind of just chat and hang out with you guys because, well, I think it's important that uh, we have discussions. But outside of the audio stack, let's talk about Ubuntu. Uh, as you can see here, I've got a lot of native packages installed as well as uh, 10 flat packs and 13 snaps. Uh, speaking of snaps, let's talk about snaps. Uh, what snaps do I have installed right now? Okay. So, I've got some snaps, not a whole lot of snaps. Like, the only two that I really use on a daily basis is the Bitwarden and Firefox snap, which, if I go to launch the Firefox snap, it does take a little bit of time to load. And, uh, that, I came into it, and I expected that. It's just that for some reason, sometimes it takes longer than usual to load, and that is a bit of a frustration. But uh, Bitwarden is the other one that I have uh, installed. Uh, you can see that I just launched it using Rofi. Uh, it hasn't shown up yet. I'll let you know when it, when it actually spawns. Uh, the window spawned, but we still don't have anything in the window yet. It's still going. I hope. Uh, now we're loading. Okay. Okay, there we go. Now I can log into my password manager. This is a password manager. I mean, I understand that it's a uh, Bitwarden and that it's an Electron client. But the password manager is that one window I want to open up and close because I don't want to be in it for for very long at all. So I want to get in and get out and not have to wait that long for a password. Because some websites if it if you wait that long to type in a password will fa will uh fa fail you. So uh like it will just treat it as a improper login attempt. So it's just like no. That's pretty much unacceptable. So Why don't I just use the flat packs, right? So yeah, I uh, put, pulled in the flat. I pulled in a few flat flat packs, like the Jitsi Meet and a couple of the Pipewire tools that uh, I haven't gotten around to re removing yet, and they're working fine. Like uh, I, I can use the Bitwarden uh, client, and uh, it launches and closes fine. Uh, the Mate environment itself is snappy and great. Uh, you can still see that I am very much a, a bit of a retro nerd in, that, in the fact that, you know, I want my classic uh, GNOME 2 menu. 
because I really do think that for like an application menu, this is the best one. I mean, right here, I have access to all of my uh, file manager stuff and in places. All of my system settings are found here, like us, uh, everything. Uh, applications, that's all this is, it's just applications that I have access to that I can use. And honestly, I think that's like the best menu system. And uh, I do enjoy it. Uh, as for like uh, the kernel I'm using, I mean, it's an LTS release, so I'm going to use the latest LTS kernel that's available, which in this case is going to be the 5.15, 5 whereas the previous LTS, which is uh, 20.04, uh, I think they're still using 5.4, but you can backport in like the 5.13 kernel or something like that. And, uh, but you can see that this is a generic kernel, which means that it's a mainline kernel right now. And eventually this is going to fall, this is going to change from, uh, generic to Ubuntu. Because, uh, I think LTS kernels only actually get like three years support from the, from the Linux team itself, which means then that, uh, any, which means then that, uh, Canonical will have to be self-supporting a kernel, which, you know what? This is a flavor. It's only going to be supported for like three years anyway. It's it's not the main version of Ubuntu, which gets the full five years of support. Not that most people would, would typically give the five years of support to the LTS release. But, uh, you know, if it kind of feels like yesterday that, uh, that 20.04 came out, you know? I mean, you go back and think about it. I think it's using like GNOME 338 or 336, somewhere around there. So it's fairly modern GNOME because uh, it's within like the last three or four releases for, for GNOME. And then... Uh, Yeah, there's really not a whole lot to talk about this distribution. Like, uh, there's nothing too innovative with the LTS release. I mean, I guess they got some cool, cool effects in like the newest version of Ubuntu, where you get get to deal with like accent colors too, which I get a little bit of in Ubuntu Mate. So uh, let me just go and pull this up real quick. Uh, but you can see I installed a couple themes here just to remind myself how to install themes. But you know. I've got, like, these little accent colors I can use. And uh, I don't have to hit an apply button or anything. I just click, and it's automatically applied. So you can see where, like, the... Well, let me pull up a file indicator, too. So let me pull up the file manager. Uh, make this a little bit smaller. And uh, let's just jump around. Like, right there's the blue. Uh, this is uh, a standard Mate theme, so let's just... Click around, and uh, you can see how it changes the little highlights on all the things. Which, uh, you know, this is Ubuntu Mate. It's famous for being green, so let's make it green. Right? Green. But yeah, uh, the Mate environment itself continues to impress me a little bit. Like, uh, if I had to stick with a desktop environment at all times, and uh, I wasn't... And I wasn't uh, going to use uh, GNOME. I'd probably go with Mate because, well, it's kind of cool. Like, it's snappy. It's efficient. It's a desktop environment that gets out of my way. Like, I don't have to learn any new paradigms or anything like that with, like, uh, what Enlightenment would ask. Or, like, in, in some people's cases, GNOME. And uh, something that's kind of important to me is that it doesn't have, like, millions upon millions upon millions of configuration options, m some of which don't even work, like uh, KDE does. I mean, I've got enough configuration in here. Like, I can go to preferences, and uh, you can see that's a bit slimmed down compared to, like, other file managers, but uh, I still have more than enough just right there. And then uh, for, like, system preferences itself, like... Uh, I can go here to look and feel, and uh, you can see that I've got, like, the appearance tool that I pulled up earlier, and I can further customize each theme by going down in, down into here, and, uh, you know, I can go 
I can separate the window borders from the GTK theme. Or I could set my mouse cursors to like uh, the KDE Breeze, but I prefer the Yaru. To be honest. And then, you know, I can just make it a huge honker of a mouse cursor too, you know. Which, I've always been a fan of a slightly larger than usual mouse cursor because it's nice to be able to find your mouse and uh, see it actually moving around. Whereas if you like the small mouse and you're a small mouse kind of guy, I guess you're on your own. But you know, give me a big mouse and preferably give me a give me a big mouse with like a color that pops out. I mean, I know that sounds weird, but when you're running around with like that red mouse cursor on your dark theme on your dark theme that's heavily blue based, it sticks out and you're not and uh, you're less likely to actually lose your mouse because I guarantee you some people have actually lo lost their mice. Uh if you haven't done it and you're in your comments uh I envy you. <laughs> That's really about it. But yeah, uh I mean Ubuntu Mate is all right. Like uh if I had to pick another one, I might look at Lubuntu. Uh, the LXQT desktop is one that I've always really, really kind of just like passively enjoyed. I'm not going to say that I've, that I'm a big fan of it or anything like that, but you know, they're, they're doing some very cool stuff with some very notorious goals of like, let's just be a minimal desktop environment that functions, it's fast, and it feels modern. And, uh, they, they accomplish a lot, a lot on that, which, uh, you know, Mate nowadays is starting to do that too. But, uh, you know, the one thing these other desktop environments are kind of lacking, though, is the high amounts of polish that uh, the GNOME team has put in, or, like, uh, the, the ecosystem that KDE has. Because uh, KDE allows you so much control, control over, like, uh, your theme and your configuration... That it has spawned a huge community community uh, backlog of just like supports, themes, icons, and and all so kinds of things, and they embrace that. Which I've got a little bit of that here with Mate too. So uh, let's go back to the screen here, and uh, just go into appearance. Just like uh, if I want more themes, I can just click a button, and uh, it takes me straight to mate look lookcom well, the Mate desktop, uh, and uh, it'll it'll go like, do I want GTK two themes or GTK three themes? Well, this is a modern version of Mate, so I want GTK three, right? So click that, and it takes me straight to matelook.org, and uh, right here's a whole bunch of themes, and uh, they're here. The problem is that uh, Installing these themes doesn't feel necessarily as native as like what KDE has because KDE it's all built into the desktop environment. But you know, uh, let me just uh, grab this random theme here, cloudy theme. If it even downloads. Oh, I guess maybe not this theme. Uh, let's just grab the sweet theme here. The sweet theme is actually a fairly popular theme for like the super heavy ricers. So yeah, let's just uh, grab just plain sweet. And... There it's downloaded, so let's open open this up. Which, of course, there's a couple pain points I've been having, too, with this. Where, like, uh, I go here and I click this button in Firefox, and it's supposed to open up the file manager with, like, the location of the file. But you can see it's not doing that. So let's uh, pull up Places and uh, go into our Downloads folder here. 
Uh, I've got a sweet.tar.xz, so let's grab that and, well, rather than send, extract here. And uh, right in here, I have a sweet theme, so let's copy that. Go back here to the root home folder, uh, control H to show hidden files. And I'm looking for a directory called dot themes. And uh, let's just paste it into here. So now I have a theme in th in here. So, and uh, you can see that it immediately pops up right here in the uh, manager, which you can see I've already done, done a little bit with this too, with like the Nord theme. But uh, let's enable the sweet theme and you can see how quickly that changes. This is a light theme. Uh, let's make sure that everything matches what it's supposed to be because I, I can see that I'm still using a very Nord-like panel. I might even just need to uh, re-log in. I guess find some icons real quick. Yeah, I mean, it's a theme. It's a very bright theme. Ah, I guess it's more of a hybrid theme, because you can see that some stuff is uh, dark, some stuff isn't. I wonder if that's actually how it's supposed to look. Yeah, possibly. But, uh, you know, I've been running around with, like, uh, this olive dark here because you know it's a nice looking uh gr green based dark theme and uh you know this wallpaper that's got to be something else you know ubuntu has had like uh this fascination with uh putting the mascot on the wallpaper for the longest time like i think there's only like one ubuntu release where they didn't feature like the animal that the distribution is named after and uh th this one is called jamie jellyfish and uh i actually quite like this one quite a bit but you know uh like uh any distribution i would say that if uh, you haven't given ubuntu a try in a while Maybe give 22.04 a try again. And if you don't like the main version, definitely look at like all the flavors. Because uh, a lot of them are actually super solid. And uh, I, I think that they're setting the future of Ubuntu itself. But anyways, uh, that's just my personal opinion. Uh, if you want to watch more of my content... There are links in the description below uh, to this same exact video, but on different services. Those services are uh, Odyssey and uh, a PeerTube instance. Now, what it is that uh, I post all of my videos and I make them public on YouTube 2 p.m. every Thursday, every Thursday of the week. But I do believe that that YouTube needs competition. So as a result. If you want to catch my content sooner and, uh, you know, shout at me a lot sooner, watch the videos off on those other services because uh, those videos are available the moment I upload them. Like they hit the upload button. I set the description, set the tags, assign the thumbnail and they click publish and it's and it's there like the whole video. I'm not locking anything behind a paywall. So, uh, as a result, I'm just pushing, I'm just putting content out there. And, uh, if for some reason you feel like that you want to give, drop me a dollar or, you know, something in the link, in the description, there is a libera pay where like you can give me money or if you'd rather just buy me cool stuff, I have like a thousand different books I have on my books I have to read before I die list 
in an Amazon wish list and the link down below. There's a couple other things there too, but you know, I'd rather you buy me the books. But anyways, guys, that's really all I've got right now. You know, I seriously did try uh, giving Void Linux a try. It just didn't work out.